This one's going to be a mystery. Actually, these are this is a tale of two teams that are on completely different trajectories. We didn't think of much of the Bengals two weeks ago, right. but they have played their hearts out, and they are actually playing very good football right now. <laughs> well, I mean, they just took apart uh, the Giants. So. Yeah, they humiliated the Giants. Uh, but they're they're playing well on both sides of the ball right now. They've they look bad at the start of the season. They're looking very good right now. The Chiefs have fallen to the bottom. I don't think there's a lot of mystery here. I mean, the, the Chiefs did play a tough game against the Steelers. But they did. The same old problems. Penalties, inability to convert third downs, a quarterback who the, the coaching staff doesn't trust to pass the ball. Right. The only bright spot they have is Jamal Charles. And, again, once you're one-dimensional either way, it's easy for teams to load up on you. So uh, I don't spend a lot of time in this, but personally, I am going to say Bengals uh, 27-13. 27-13. Okay. Wow. We're, we're pretty close on this. I'm saying that Kansas City is going to be able to uh, net uh, 16. I'm thinking that uh, they're going to get at least a touchdown out of Jamal Charles and that he'll be able to drag them close enough to be able to get some kicks. So you see you're calling it 27-16? I'm, I'm saying 28-16. 28-16. I, I yeah, okay. I, see, I, I see Cincinnati being able to drill in oh. for uh, four touchdowns. Okay, fair enough. Uh, you know, and, and the real thing is, Jamal Charles uh, against the 20th ranked rush defense. I mean, okay, you, you know, th of course, that's compiled up for the season. I think that Cincinnati's rush defense has been better, but still they're 20th ranked. And, and Dalton is uh, going against the 8th uh, uh, pass defense, which is kind of surprising that Kansas City is the uh, number 8 pass defense. It's not all bad news for Kansas City. Right. But Dalton, you know what? I, I have uh, gained a lot of respect for Dalton. Um, I'll go first on this one. So Tampa's been a streaky team. Sometimes they actually play really well. Uh, but for the most part, they haven't been, been terribly good. And I do believe, that, like you said, the Raiders are on their way out. They may not have all the pieces on the field yet, but... It's a home game. This is a game, actually, I don't think will be a ton of scoring just because, like you say, the Raiders have an offensive issue as far as, uh, as quality of, of people on the field right now. Tampa is just the team going nowhere. Raiders 13-10. Yeah. Raiders 13-10. Yeah, you, you know what? I, I, I probably could get behind. I, I think I would actually go with, with your call. Raiders 13 10. We're both on the board for the same um, thing. You know, and the, the thing about it, too, is that, you know, I, I happen to know someone who works with the Tampa organization and the stories that have. Our one inside source. Yes, exactly. Our one inside source. And, you know, I, I will in no way provide any actual details, but the things that I hear, it's going to be a long time before Tampa Bay becomes anything a contender again uh, yeah it's 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 sad it really is sad because i i was so happy for the john gruden or uh you know uh uh time period and they're a long ways away from that yep. i mean i saw them play last year against new orleans and and actually um they were they were different they were different and better uh, last year than they were this year. Yeah. They've think, really fallen off the... I don't think they've gelled as a unit on either side of the ball. Um, um, I think that there's a tendency to want to throw that at San Diego and, and say that it's automatic for San Diego, and I think the answer would be right. But I think that actually that game is going to be more of a, a, a nail-biter. You think? Yes. I, put a score in that one? A score. Um, I'm going to say that... Um, I'm going to say it's going to be like a 21-10 a game okay. or 21-14. And you're going to put the Chargers on that one? I'm going to put, put Chargers, Chargers on All it. right. So the Chargers have lost two games. Quite frankly, they, they, they're, they should be embarrassed about the Broncos game. See, I would have that pencil to make a note of my prediction there. <laughs> uh, Except you T-boat it off I, the set. Give me your glasses. I'll T-boat that too. Anything else you want me to T-boat <laughs> off the set? <laughs> <laughs> the, the thing is, randomly, one time in a hundred, it'll hit you. That's right. And put an eye out. <laughs> it'll put your eye out. And then, then I'll die. Yes. Uh, so the Chargers have come off two tough losses. Uh, they had their bye week. They should have come out strong and prepared. Three. That's true. They have. They are on a. They are getting burned to the ground, aren't they? Um, and uh, this last week's game, you know, it's a hard game. Bad right. weather conditions. You always get fluky, fluky games that way. But that. 
quite frankly, I thought they would have come out pretty hard after that Broncos game and the bye week. But I think that's a symptom of, of the rot that is at the center of the organization. I believe it's mostly Philip Rivers. I'm not in, how sure how much of this is Norv yeah. as well. <laughs> yes, if it's Rivers, it's a wet rot. Oh, I get it. <laughs> uh, I still had that pencil yeah. to stab myself in the forehead right now. Uh, so <laughs> I think, but here's the thing. They'll be going to be playing at home. The fans are going to be mad. And quite frankly, this is a part of the season. You know, you, this is kind of the, it's not the second half. It's the game before, but still, when you're when you're a mediocre team, not playing well, this is when people are playing for the job. So I think the Chargers are going to destroy the Chiefs because the Chiefs got their own problems. They've got this quarterback controversy. They're going to be back and forth. Nobody knows who's playing for who. The teams are moralized. I don't think they believe in the coaching staff. Uh, 31-13, Chargers, and it, won't, and it won't be close on that. It'll, it'll be a blowout in the first half, and any points the Chiefs pick up will be garbage time points. To register mm -hmm. is actually embedded in your app, mm -hmm. and that one doesn't know that that a certain tag is actually only uh, um, uh, is actually um, associated to your user. So anybody, me for instance, mm -hmm. I could register for the tag that that uh, that's um, that's identifying your user with your user ID. So it's not a big deal if you register also for French News, or yes. if that's <laughs> not a secret. If somehow that 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 URI, that unique identifier, gets out, if it's but if, but if it's a unique, personal identifying URI, then that's a problem. Yes, you might want to secure the registration process in, in a way uh, which is done by, by, by basically not registering directly from the device to the notification hub, which basically means the problem was the connection string. Right. Let's not give the connection string anymore. Okay, so this is interesting because it's the same kind of architectural indirection that we did in the previous videos where you know the responsibilities didn't quite feel right. Let's put someone else in charge. Yes. So I'm going to guess that you're going to take the responsibility of registering from the client and you're going to move it back. Yes. Okay, yes. so how do, we, how do we do that? So basically, uh, we do that by basically uh, using the authentication mechanism that you're already using for your app. So most right. likely, if you do have users, mm -hmm. you have a way to, uh, to identify that I'm Elio and I can only register for user ID of the Elio user okay. and not for somebody else. Right, I might be using basic auth over HTTPS or I might be using NTLM or who knows, Windows Azure Active Federating, Directory. Federating, Active matter. Directory, Facebook, whatever you, you're, you're okay. using. But um, the thing is that uh, the registration call is not issued from the device to the hub. But basically, you just create a pass-through, like an authentication gateway, mm -hmm. uh, out of your backend. So I you, gotcha. So you have like a usually a post web API, mm -hmm. something on on your backend that is taking the registration request from the device. Right. It's doing my authentication, making sure that I'm Elio, and then say yes, you're indeed authorized to register for user ID column. Elio. Okay. So then the notification hub credentials only ever live on the server. That is correct. There is no credential on the device anymore. You you use the same uh, authentication scheme as your app backend. So then, is, what do I have to pass from the client to the serve the backend that is going to be doing this on my behalf? The, just the channel URI, but nothing. Usually, a couple of things. Uh, the channel URI for sure, because that's the whole reason of, of registration. You might have some tags. So maybe the app backend doesn't know all the tags and all the preferences. Mm -hmm. Uh, but that might that is completely de dependent on your on your architecture. You could have the tag uh, the app that can in inject some tags in that r uh, registration call. You also need a way to identify that specific device. Okay, that is done uh, um, uh, with um, by creating an installation ID. So on the device, you create a GUID, you store it somewhere. And basically, you need to make sure that the registration that you that you only create one registration for that specific device. Okay. This is a job that is usually done by our device SDK, but in this case, there's no device SDK because this wasn't really secure. Mm. Um, so uh, you you have to do that job. All right. Let's see the code. Let's see the code. So in here, ah, wrong one. That one right there. there okay. We go. Okay. Uh, so well, this looks like web API. I, you've got a post here. Yes. So basically, what we're doing, our, our device is, is is issuing a registration call. Is actually API slash register. Okay. Okay. It kind of makes sense. And then in here, what we're passing, we're passing an installation ID, a channel URI, and a user ID. And you're just uh, uh, there's lots of ways to do this, certainly. Yeah. But you're just passing a JSON, a object, JSON object and pulling stuff out. Yeah. So uh, in here. Um, there should be like some your authentication logic. It doesn't have to be here. I just put it here to make sure that there has to right, be there right, has right. to happen somewhere. <laughs> yeah, and you would in fact not throw an exception, but you'd throw yeah. an error five hundred or some appropriate restful exception. Yeah. Okay. This is just to say it yeah. has to happen here. Yeah, it's a demo. Um, and then 
what we're doing here, we're basically uh, getting the registration by tag. We're using the installation ID to identify all the registrations of my device. Okay, so the installation ID is the unique identifier of this one person on this one device. Yes. Yes. Okay, and then for all the registrations uh, that this person has. Yes. What we're doing, we're updating the child URI, so we're getting the registration. If it's the first one, uh, we're, we, we update it, so we make sure that that's up to date. We update the child URI, we update the tags. Mm -hmm. So the registration is for me, I am the correct user ID, blah, blah, blah. Right. If I have more than one, it should never happen, but this is like an escape. Um, uh, if uh, you have a bug in your code, right. you're calling things, the installation ID was changed. And you're saying you should never have one because this is a unique device. Yes. There should only ever be one of this device. Yes, yes. But sometimes, I mean, it's, it's, it's a mobile app. You have millions of things up there. Just, yeah, you just to make sure to clean up your cleaning stuff. cleaning up after yourself. And, th and then you clean up this. Then, of course, if there wasn't already one, you have to create a new one. This is the first time that you register. Right. In here, I'm, o I'm, I'm also sending a notification saying, hi, you actually registered. I see. And then this could be templated as well, as we saw before. Of course. Of course. Oh, okay. So in, in here, actually, if you want to have it templated, in here, I'm assuming Windows. But if you have multiple apps, right. you would actually have to um, uh, to receive the channel URI for Windows. You would have to, to receive the device token for, for iOS. You would have to, to receive. So this would be a little part of your uh, back end, which would be platforms, but which has to know that right. you're handling multiple platforms. So if I were writing like, you know, Bejeweled or one of these great cross-platform games that has yeah. breaking news like, hey, we're having a sale on jewels, yes. but specific things like you, Elio, have not played in one week, come back, come back, then it would, it would all come through here, it's going to be unique, I want to make sure yes. that I've abstracted all that away. That is correct. The, the nice thing is that you still do not have to have any data layer. This is just like gateway. There's no, um, there, there's no like database in, in here for channel URIs, for platforms, associating a certain user with the platform mm -hmm. and all those things. You can still use notification hubs for all that stuff. So then that means that from a, from a database, what is being stored perspective, the only thing that's really being stored is the installation ID on the client. It's called on the client, so it's and not the, the tags, the things that the user is interested in yes. on the client. Yes. And that's just being stored.